Ladies and gentlemen, Snapshot 22W13A is here with your new cute assistant, the LA, new ancient cities in the deep dark, and many other changes. My name is Slice Slime, and I'm here to show you all the changes in this version. Let's start with the LA. The LA is a new passive mob with 10 hit points, that is 5 hearts of health. You can find them as captives in a new cage structure near Pillager Outpost or a new type of room in Woodland Mansions. Although, there are some problems with that that we'll get back to later. If you interact with them while holding an item, you'll give them the item. This will make the LA like you and follow you around. While holding an item, they will try to collect the same item up to a stack of collected things. This means they can fetch 64 cobblestone, 16 snowballs or a single sword, for instance, plus the one you gave it to begin with. They will attempt to bring the items to the player they like and throw out the stack of collected items there. If the LA hears a note block play, that note block becomes the LA's favorite note block for 30 seconds. It will then stay near that note block to bring its collected items to the note block instead of to the player until the 30 seconds have passed. Interacting with an LA that is holding an item while your hand is empty will take back the item it is holding. One thing to note is that if you own an LA, that is, you gave it an item, you can't hurt it by swinging at it. This prevents you from accidentally killing it as it swings by to drop off some items. If you kill an LA, you're a terrible person, and you don't get any loot. Let me also mention some other mob changes in this snapshot. Which biomes spawn which type of frog have been updated, with warm frogs now also spawning in warm ocean biomes, temperate frogs now also spawning in meadows and stony peaks, and cold frogs now spawning in frozen oceans, deep frozen oceans, frozen rivers, snowy beaches, snowy taigas, groves, and in the deep dark. Wardens can now pass over rails, so cheesing them using rails is no longer an option. And four-legged mobs now sit correctly in chest boats. Let's talk about structures, because the ancient cities are added in this version. You might have seen this before if you've played the experimental deep dark snapshot, but a fair number of things have changed since then. Many of the structures have changed with new and tweaked pieces, which we'll go through in detail in just a second here. There's now a lot more skulk spread around compared to the experimental snapshots as well. Ancient cities always spawn in deep dark biomes near the bottom of the world. The structure always spawns at height negative 52. No mobs can spawn in the structure even if it would extend into a different biome than the deep dark. The center of the ancient city is dominated by a huge frame, a new portal-like formation made out of a new block called Reinforced Deep Slate. We'll get back to this block later. Underneath you'll find a patch of soul sand or soul soil on fire, and below this what you could call a form of redstone laboratory with basic redstone circuits laid out in different rooms. The cities also have plenty of walkways with skulk sensor powered light posts, deep slate pillars, soul lanterns and candles. There's an icebox room full of packed ice and snow. You can also find loot rooms with chests and even some skeleton skulls. The loot chests here are guarded by skulk sensors and shriekers, so if you grab the loot you run the risk of summoning a warden. There are two types of loot chests, the regular chest and a special one for the icebox structures. Each normal chest has between 4 and 9 rounds picked from the following loot. 1.6% chance of one or two enchanted golden apples or the other side music disc. Around 3% chance of a compass, one or two skulk catalysts, a name tag, a randomly enchanted diamond hoe or randomly enchanted diamond leggings, a saddle, the 13 music disc or the cat music disc. Around 5% chance of a swift sneak enchanted book of random level, four to 10 skulk blocks, 1 to 3 skulk sensors, 1 to 4 candles, 1 to 15 amethyst shards, 1 to 3 XP bottles, 1 to 15 glow berries or randomly enchanted iron leggings. Or around 6% chance of a strong regen potion, a randomly enchanted book, 3 to 10 unenchanted books, 1 to 15 bones or 1 to 15 soul torches. And finally, around 10% chance of 6 to 16 pieces of coal. The icebox chest is a bit simpler, it contains between 4 and 10 rounds picked from the following loot. Around 11% chance of 2 to 6 suspicious stew of either night vision or blindness. 1 to 10 golden carrots or 1 to 10 baked potatoes. Around 22% chance of 2 to 6 packed ice. And around 44% chance of 2 to 6 snowballs. 
Let's take a look at how these structures are formed in detail. They always start with a city center piece. There are three different variants of these, but they're mostly the same, consisting of the massive frame structure, the podium, if you will, that is standing on, and the entire redstone laboratory inside. The only difference between the three is the decoration on top, where one is mostly flat, one has a chest with a single golden carrot in it, and the last one has a pair of walls. These connect outwards through a number of segments called city center walls. Those come in a number of shapes. Two bottom pieces, a bottom left corner, two bottom right corners, left, right top, top left corner, and top right corner pieces. From those, the structure connects out to an entrance connector, leading into five different entrance paths. These connect outwards to wall pieces, which there are many variants of, some ruined, but most intact. These all connect outwards to more walls, and also sideways into structures, which there are also many different ones of. There are barracks. Three different types of camps. Three different types of chambers. An ice box, a sauna, and a small statue. There are also two types of pillars, a medium one and a large one, and then a set of ruins. Two small ones, two medium ones, one large one, and four tall ones. Phew! What a massive structure! Let's move on to blocks and items. Of course, with the LA there's also a new spawn egg, which comes in a vibrant blue color. There's also that new block, Reinforced Deep Slate. It is an undirectional block with different side texture from the top and bottom textures. It can be broken, but not mined. It has no correct tool and takes 80 seconds to break, or 60 seconds with haste 2, but drops nothing when you do. This block is unobtainable in survival mode and can only be found in the ancient city structures. It's indestructible to withers and ender dragons, and one notable change from the experimental deep dark snapshot is that it cannot be pushed by pistons. A change to Skulk Shriekers in this version is that they can now be obtained using Silk Touch and now get placed by Skulk Catalyst Spread. However, only the Skulk Shriekers that are generated with the world will now be able to summon the Warden. The new mangrove leaves didn't drop sticks when destroyed like other leaves. That is fixed in this snapshot. And note blocks have been changed. Only wool and wool carpets now block the sound from a note block. Covering them with other blocks now still makes it possible to play the note. There's plenty more to come still, but let me take a moment to ask you to play a note on the like button for the video. Liking the video helps to get YouTube to take the hint that this video should be shown to more viewers, so I'd really appreciate your help. Thank you! Let's talk about gameplay. A bug has been fixed with all types of furnaces that wouldn't smelt anything if there wasn't at least one fuel item left in the fuel slot. The recipes for crafting any type of minecart with another thing, such as a chest minecart or a TNT minecart, are now shapeless. Those minecarts now also stick together when broken, so instead of a minecart and a chest dropping as two separate items, you'll now get a single chest minecart item. Of course, any contents of the cart still drops. A related bug has also been fixed with chest boats that would not drop their contents when broken by a player in creative mode. Speaking of chest boats, the recipes for crafting them are also now grouped in the recipe book. 
Finally, a fix for buckets of tadpoles, which can now be dispensed from a dispenser just like other buckets of creatures. Let's talk about advancement. There are three new advancements in this version. It spreads for killing a mob near a skull catalyst. With our powers combined for acquiring all three types of frog lights. And bucket bucket for catching a tadpole in a bucket. The 2x2 advancement has now also been changed to include breeding frogs. Options fixes in this version. The GUI scale button had turned into a slider last snapshot and has now transformed back into a button. Some options also had missing or untranslated names, which is also fixed. The chat scale option also ended up set to zero by default in new installations, which meant that chat disappeared entirely. Visual fixes in this version. Some Z fighting issues have been fixed with frogs' feet and insides their mouths. The height of the lock on the chest in a chest boat has been adjusted, and the bottom face of the warden's right arm now has the bioluminescent layer activated. There are new sounds in this version for the LA. It has a sound for idling without an item. Getting an item. Idling with an item. When the item is taken back. For hurting. And for dying. Instability news, a crash with the warden has been fixed. That's it for the news, but we're going to stay on the stability theme here for a moment with a known issue. Loading any structure that contains an LA into the game will cause the game server to stall, which will mean the game stops working entirely. So maybe hold on for a bit before going off on that adventure to find LAs. That's it for this time. Thank you so much for staying with me until the end of the video, I really appreciate it. If you're interested in what else is new in the wild update, check out this video right here, it's got even more news for you.